Stable Diffusion, the AI art generator with some modules that can create some crazy accurate to your prompt results has fully launched publicly available with open source stuff and a lot of different tools have come out and we're going to be navigating quite a few of them here on the Analog Dreams YouTube channel. But I wanted to start out with the easiest, most accessible form. And in this video, I'm showing you how you can generate this, the best pizza in the world, or David Harbour as Thanos, with basically just a double click on Windows here with as little setup as possible. This is the easiest way to run Stable Diffusion locally on your machine without any issues. I am super stoked. I'm Addy, welcome back to Analog Dreams, the channel dedicated towards empowering your art and creativity and walking you through some of the crazy glitch art and AI, you know, art generator tools. And eventually we'll focus on like affinity software and stuff like that. But before we get to that, this is Stable Diffusion G-Risk GUI. This is the project that we're focusing on here today. This is available on itch.io and you do need a NVIDIA graphics card in order to run this as it leverages the CUDA rendering engine that only NVIDIA uses. Uh, ideally, someone will make some of this stuff that runs on AMD or Intel in the future, but a lot of this stuff really kind of works best with NVIDIA cards anyway. So unfortunately, you do need that. But otherwise, you don't need to do much of anything. It's kind of dubious how they're doing this, but you, you, you just go to download, download the three gigabyte .rar file, save it to your downloads, open it up in your favorite archive manager or maybe Windows. I use 7-zip, it's free open source, linked below, and extract the files. They'll extract to their own folder, and you just scroll down and run the stable diffusion grisk gui.exe. That is it, and you are running. It'll pop up a little command prompt to run the script, and you get this little GUI program right here. The UI is mostly fairly straightforward, but there are some, you know, stable diffusion specific things we will take a look at. You can choose an image model if you import your own into here. By default, it only has the one. I'm not going to mess with additional ones, but eventually you will be able to be more modular with it. You have your text prompt location that you enter your text into. You can choose your output folder. By default, it just goes to a results folder in the folder that you just extracted here. It's fine to leave it, but you can you know, make a folder on your desktop or something if you'd prefer that. Then you have your steps, your V scale, your samples per prompt, which is currently broken, so it won't do anything if you change that. It'll only ever generate one image. You can use seeds, which we'll talk about in a moment, and then your output resolution. The more output resolution you use, uses more VRAM. I'm on an NVIDIA RTX 3090, which has 24 gigs, and I can't exactly go that big, especially when I have all my recording stuff open at the moment. But we're going to come up with a prompt here. We're going to say, a hey, computer's dreams and imaginations. So you have two main options to configure here. You have steps, which are basically how long it will take to create the image and to create a more detailed image. The app actually recommends about 150 steps or less. Some of the people on my Discord server say they have better with closer to like 30 to 50. Then you have vScale, which is how much it's going to adhere to your specific prompt. And if you set something absurdly high, like 50, it's going to basically like deep fry everything and just and then maybe not get the result that you want. 7.5 is the default. Between 5 and 7 seems to be the best result so far from the people that we've tested with. I haven't done a whole lot of thorough testing, but you can experiment from there. But for steps, we're going to do like 100. So we've got a computer's dreams and imaginations, 100 steps, which again is like quality, how long it takes to make the image. It does not use more VRAM for more steps. And then you have your output resolution. Most lower end graphics cards with like 8 or less gigabytes of VRAM shouldn't really experiment with this too much, but we can do like... 1920 by 1920. Now I am using most of my VRAM already here. <laughs> I'm using 16.2 for all my OBS scenes and things like that. Uh, but that shouldn't be a huge problem. We're going to go ahead and fire a render and see if I crash everything. A few moments later. Oh, out of memory. Yep. Yeah, we ran out of memory because of OBS going. So I'm going to pause all my recordings. And we're going to come back when it can actually make the image. But when you do generate an image, it will give you a PNG file in the resolution that you set. I could probably set this back to 512. We're going to fire that render off. It'll give you the PNG of the image that you set, as well as a text file with all of the configuration. The text prompt that you gave it, the folder it's stored in, the resolution, and all the options. Just so you can reference that whenever you need to for future results. So we have a render going here at 512 by 512. You can see here it's going. Uh, it would be the steps that it's on. So it's on step 44. 
how long it's been going, and how many iterations or steps per second that it's operating at, which is really good information. You can kind of start to benchmark it a little bit, too. We're at step 63, and we told it to do 100, so we're almost done. And we're done. And it gave us something with a bunch of text for some reason. The rest of the image would actually be kind of cool. But then you can iterate from there. The amazing thing about this and why I have been advocating for this and in my big video about AI art tools, I mentioned building my own dedicated AI rig to run things on. I have tutorials for running Stable Diffusion and some of the modules and stuff on your own thing if you want to do a hardcore Linux server setup. This is just supposed to be for newbies running Windows. Not meant condescendingly, but just, you know, this is the entry level version. This costs you nothing. You are running it locally on your machine. You are in control of what's going on. There's no filters or restrictions. There's no credits that you have to renew. You're just running it locally. You just need the power and the patience. And you can fire off like a bunch of these. Like, for example, I can say, computer's dreams and imagination, no text, a computer dreaming. I can do pizza sauce. <laughs> And then, what do we want? What do we want? What do we want? We want David Harbour. We want a realistic, whoa, beautiful portrait of David Harbour as Mickey Mouse. <laughs> and it will fire off all of those as separate renders. So if you want to, like, for example, spend your day while you're at work or something, taking notes in your own little notepad or sketchbook or whatever, kind of coming up with the ideas of the prompts that you want to generate... And then before you go to bed at night, just, you know, add them to a queue, fire it all off. You get to wake up and have just like a million images generated at no cost. Just waiting while you were asleep. It's freaking awesome. We're going to fire off these renders. It's going to take a hot minute. Because we're doing four. All right. It has finished our queue. And I will say right up front that Midjourney does a lot better of a job than a lot of these other services at more abstract, just random thoughts prompts versus Stable Diffusion and Dolly do a lot better the more specific and like very detailed you get. But here is our results. We have a computer's dreams and imaginations with no text, a computer dreaming, pizza sauce, and David Harbour as Mickey Mouse. I guess the broad shoulders part is supposed to be the David Harbour part of that Mickey Mouse, but otherwise that's just the Mickey Mouse. Pizza sauce is a pizza. You get the idea, though. It's a really cool tool. You gotta play with it and finagle it a little bit, and if we, if you do want to come over to the hardcore side of running the more Linux-focused Python tools, uh, once we get that set up, you can add in a bunch of modules and things get absolutely wild once you go that way. Hope you enjoyed this little intro or teaser or what have you. A lot more cool stuff coming. Let me know what you've been making with Stable Diffusion in the comments below or over on our AI Experiments channel on Discord, discord.gg slash peoplesvox. Remember to be kind, rewind. Thank you for your support here on Analog Dreams.